You can't call yourself a fight fan if you're not already looking forward to February for Islam Makachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. The MMA circuit around the world has its eyes wide open to see if Volkanovsky can get that second belt or if he's going to be handed his first loss, Dagestan style. In today's video, we're going to go over Volkanovsky's determination to beat Makachev and give you the MMA world's opinions on the bout. First up, Alexander Volkanovsky determined to find the gap in Makachev's armor. Hailing a record of 25-1-0, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky has torn through the featherweight to earn the rank of number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter with just one man behind him, Islam Makachev. He seems to invite the challenge that Makachev represents with excitement, having been done and dusted with most fighters in his own division. Of course, even he knows what this fight represents for him. A win at UFC 284 on the 12th of February will see him check off a lot of boxes as a fighter. Having already earned the featherweight title, a win against Makachev will see Volkanovsky capture the lightweight title, earn double champ status, and score arguably his biggest win in his home country. Alexander has maintained that he's been chasing double champ status even before he knew who he was fighting, and when Islam managed to hold the title, it was him that Volkanovsky had his eyes on. On Michael Bisping's Believe You Me podcast, Alexander said his excitement not only comes from wanting to hold both belts on his shoulders, but also to defeat someone like Makachev. It's clear that he's not underestimating his opponent and is excited for the challenge. The reason he gave for the importance of this fight in his heart was the fact that nobody in the league has been able to figure out what to do when faced with Dagestani Sambo wrestlers like Islam and his longtime friend and coach Khabib Nurmagomedov. It's very clear that he wants to be the one to show everyone that Islam is indeed beatable, regardless of how invincible he might seem in his fights. Following that, it's clear that Alexander the Great has embraced the challenge. Having a 12-0 record in the UFC as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter, anyone in Alexander's position would aim to continue the greatness for as long as possible, but not Volkanovsky. The fact that people are pinning him as the underdog in this fight is what is exciting him the most, as he told Bisping on his podcast. Volkanovsky wants to be the guy that takes out the most feared man in the lightweight division. The doubt is what makes the possibility of the win so much sweeter for him. There's no doubt that he's one of MMA's greatest champions, as he's proven with his wins over the Korean zombie Chan Sung Young and the definitive closing of his trilogy with former featherweight champ Max Holloway. He told Michael Bisping that he believes that challenges like these make a fighter better, and eight weeks out he's already twice the fighter he was. Volkanovsky has made it clear that he has no intentions of backing out of a challenge just to safeguard his pristine record in the UFC. While he goes up a weight class to face Makachev, the featherweight division has lined up Yair, Rodriguez, and Josh Emmett for the interim title. Many are doubting the decision for him to go up a weight class while his division is lining up new contenders for the belt, but he says he's just knocking off his goals one at a time by taking this fight. For people who think that Makachev is too big and strong for the featherweight champ, Volkanovski is determined to prove you wrong. His goals are clear. Train for the challenge, show people that regardless of how unstoppable he looks, Islam Makachev is defeatable and raise both belts in his home country in the most amazing fashion. Coming up, Volkanovski had to teach Sambo wrestler a lesson in training. The featherweight champion is going into his next fight as the underdog. Many fans think that Islam's size, strength, grappling and wrestling will prove to be too much for the Australian, but he has proved that this is far from the case. To beat someone like Islam Makachev, it would only make sense for Volkanovsky to bring his ground game up to par with a lightweight. To do so, his camp brought in a sambo wrestler to get him comfortable with the techniques that got Islam where he is. In his interview with Bisping, Alexander recalled the wrestler being over-efficient with his suggestions to the team, which did not sit right with him. The featherweight champion said he had to teach him a lesson by dominating him on the mats and showing him that the camp was doing pretty pretty well without him. Apparently, the camp's 21-year-old fighters were also called in to grapple with a sambo wrestler, and it looked like more the same. Through this recollection, we believe that Volkanovski meant to tell Bisping's viewers that he is well on his way to bringing his wrestling up to a point where he can be a problem for his opponent on February the 12th. Moving on, let's look at what the world of MMA thinks about this clash of the champions. Starting us off is the lightweight champion himself, Islam Makachev. Enough talk about the challenger, let's see what his opponent has to say. There's no doubt out that Islam Makachev has been an absolute force in the octagon ever since he entered the UFC. With Khabib in his corner, it seems like the man is on a one-way trip to the top. He's proved his game against all kinds of fighters.
Rodgers. Many fans were skeptical, saying that his only tool is his ground game, but he's proved he's a very well-rounded fighter. Nobody can doubt this after his fights with the best striker in the game, Israel Adesanya, and the best grappler, Charles Oliveira. His only comments have come through a quoted tweet response to a picture saying that Volkanovski will be able to hold his composure when taken down by Makachev, and the response was sharp and short. After first 15 helpless seconds on the ground, I guarantee you will panic. We guess both fighters are ready to bring their A game on the 12th of February. Next up is Sean the Sugar Show O'Malley. In an interview, when asked about his opinion on the fight, Sean O'Malley said that he had a weird feeling about it. The Bantamweight fighter did concede that it would be very tough for Volkanovski to beat Makachev, but also added that the Australian is being underestimated here. In his opinion, the featherweight champion will pose much more of a threat than everyone thinks. O'Malley also added that if there's anyone who can beat Makachev, it has to be Alexander Volkanovsky, and if he's unable to, the Sugar Show doesn't know who can. This is still very close to Volkanovsky's own thoughts. Indeed, the challenge is there, but the job isn't impossible. Following that, we have Rafael Dos Anjos. According to the former lightweight champion, Makachev is avoiding a real challenge by fighting Volkanovsky. Dos Anjos was very clear that he didn't understand why Makachev chose his first title defense to come against a featherweight champion and maintained that he should be fighting against someone from the division. These comments could be rooted in the fact that Dos Anjos has shown a willingness to fight Makachev, and the two have seen numerous fight cancellations between 2020 and 2022. RDJ's prediction nonetheless is that the Dagestani Sambo wrestler will win that fight by submission. Next up we have Joe Rogan. As we all know, Volkanovski is moving up a weight class to fight Makachev, and oftentimes fighters let this affect their agility. Joe Rogan thinks that the Australian speed can play a huge factor in the result of the fight. According to Rogan, Makachev is yet to fight someone who is as fast as Volkanovski. In his opinion, if the featherweight champion can catch Makachev a few times on his feet and avoid some of the takedowns, he has a good chance. Rogan also discussed the fact that with speed comes the ability to defend takedowns, which is obviously a huge advantage while facing a wrestler like Makachev. The UFC commentator did not forget to mention that even with all of that, there's a huge size difference that will come into play because the Dagestan he is no normal 155-er. If you're going up against one of the bigger lightweights and you're a short guy, yes, you might be able to put on the muscle to defend the takedowns, but the reach will always remain a disadvantage. Coming in now is Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler weighed in on the discussion about the bout in a recent interview. He said that he was interested in seeing how the fight does, and while being a fan of Volkanovski, there's no doubt that he will come into that fight significantly smaller than his opponent. Getting into the specifics, he said that the Australian native has the advantage when it comes to striking, power, and speed. With that being said, his chances can only be called good if Makachev doesn't try to go for the takedown in the first round. Volkanovski will only be in a bad place if the wrestler just decides he wants to take the match to the ground and keep it there. Chandler added that Alex has what it takes to squeak out a decision, but not a finish. Lastly, we have Michael Bisping. We'd say Michael the Count Bisping had the most interesting take on the two fighters squaring off. In his opinion, Volkanovski's size will actually play in his favor as he believes that it makes him a much harder target to take down. Bisping added that for Makachev, he's taking on a guy who is significantly shorter than he is. Volkanovski has a lower center of gravity which makes him harder to take down and get a hold of. This fight will see Makachev needing to make level changes a lot more often than he's used to and so it'll be harder for him to get in deep and secure a body lock. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Volkanovski has a chance at becoming the champ champ? Let us know in the comments below. Make Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.